howdy there all you wonderful shoppers. Welcome back to VG Emporium, video game music and more. And today we are going to have a focus on the more part. What kind of more? Mods. More mods. But not the kind of mod that adds a Randy Savage dragon that flies around and tries to attack you while you ride around on Thomas the Tank Engine. No, I'm referring to modules. A little tiny data nugget of musical information. It is actually the very first musical module format. Before there was .it, .s3m, .xm, you know, what have you, there was .mod. And it got its start on the Amiga. And I would try to explain as to how it happened, but I, I just can't really do it. But there is a video out there on YouTube called Trackers, The Sound of 16-Bit by Ahoy. And uh, he goes into like the beginnings of like the 16-bit computing eras. Um, talks about like the early Amiga Music software, and then the eventual like creation of the trackers by like you know somebody who just wanted to create a program that could he could easily make music with, and thus birthing the mod format. And then he talks about the evolution of the software to where it became real you know better. Eventually, you got Octomed, and then just all these other tracking programs. I'm going to link it in the show notes, and uh, I would really recommend you go check it out, because you did a really awesome job on it. So enough of my Gavin. Let me tell you a bit about this track that we came in on. This was Absolute Camel by Torben Hansen, a.k.a. Metal or Bonsai PC. And this was released under the demo group Vibrance. Now with this track, it's probably pretty obvious that there's four tracks going on, all stereo panned. Yeah, this one just has like that really nice, like groovy, funky bass line. The percussion is really nice and snappy. Like the, the pads in the background are just so chill. And that lead just kind of going all over the place. That's all due to Torben Hansen, AKA Metal. He got started creating music back in 1987 when I was born on the Commodore 64 and then eventually moving on to the Amiga and then the PC, all part of the demo scene. But he also creates music outside of the demo scene under the name Two Legs. And he does a lot of like, how, like Deep House, Garage, Soulful House. And he was actually one of the artists that contributed to Soundshock FM Funk Madness back in 2011, which I did that feature way back in episode 8. So if you want to hear some really crazy FM Funk, I would you suggest you go check that out. Oh, and before we move on, one of the things that a lot of demo sceners did was uh, they would enter text in where like the instrument names would be. So what he wrote in this is, this is partly a conversion of an old tune which I did together with Thomas Drax Mogensen Vibrance for the game Lollipop. Played this tune with Fair Play on a Gus for the best result. Fair Play is a module player made by Jens Christian Hus of Vibrance. Enjoy Lollipop! That one's pretty tame compared to some others I've read. They get pretty wild with those, uh, with those text things. So now with that, let's move on to our next track. This is Skata by Azazel. You just heard Shkata, made by Azazel back in 1996. You know, you just gotta love those really solid breaks, the vocal samples going on in there, that Like that. 
Just has a solidly ridiculous energy about it. Gotta love it. So now Azazel, as far as I could tell, has been involved with the demo scene since 1995 and has been making stuff, you know, even now, I think. I, like I said, I haven't really been able to find much. Because honestly, the first thing that comes up when I look up Azazel demo scene is Azazel scene from Supernatural, which I never watched, didn't really care for it. But what I did find was some information on Exotica.org, which is a pretty big, uh, like, Amiga-centric site. And, uh, yeah, it says here he's been active since 1995, 98, part of the Black Lotus, um, helping to create things like utility discs, disc magazines, and, of course, demos. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so now the flavor text from his module. It says, Yeah, out there tune by Azazel. Out there. Yeah, man. Yeah, get the bong, man. Smokey samples. Me lizard man. Cho, the JV80 out there, the D20, and Celsius man. Thanks. I give so many hollas to the eternal snow and yoke. Can't beat you guys. You simply rule. I go. There you go. 8Q. Just sheer ridiculousness. This next one takes itself a little more seriously. It's Spell Amolioration by Uncle Tom of Razor.
That epic was Spell Amelioration by Uncle Tom of Razor. And though it may not be as crisp sounding as Absolute Camel or pushing those four channels as much as Shkata, it pretty much makes up for that by being like uh, four or five songs in one track. Which I believe is kind of one of the strengths of the mod format, which is like you just have those four tracks to go with so you can't really like, you know, go all over the place, you know, having all these different things going on with multiple tracks. So you can focus in on like, you know, what you're making, like, you know, the melodies, the progression, you know, if you want to make like a giant like 10 minute epic, just go for it. You're not, you know, by 8, 16, 32, even 64 like different tracks going on at once, you know, even though there's people who are able to do that and I can't fathom how. And yeah, this track just ends up sounding, you know, pretty epic and big with even with those four channel limitations on it. And that is in small part thanks to the stereo panning that's going on, even though it is hard panning, it's still, you know, used pretty effectively. Now, Uncle Tom, uh, real name Thomas Dahlgren of Sweden, also known as Titan. He's been active since about 1988, all the way up to, as far as I can tell, 2012. And he's been involved with a few different demo groups, uh, Scoop X, Razor1911, and North Star. And from the few sites I've found his stuff on, um, he's primarily been making music on the Amiga through like the mod format for demos. So now, what is the flavor text on his module read? It says, music composed in 1989 by Uncle Tom of Razor. This is the finished version of S.A. The one which was used in SAE Mega Demo wasn't really finished. Enjoy the song, but music grippers should better stay away from this product. It's for Razor use only. For no matter what year it is, there's always people out there that will rip the music, either be a tracker module or MIDI. They'll load it up in the software of their choice, add in new samples or instruments, kind of replacing the ones that are already there, maybe making some slight changes, and then and then slapping it out there in the world saying it, I created this, I did this, haha, <laughs> aren't I great? Those sneaky, cheeky little dookie bugs. And actually, this is the perfect segue into our next track, which has a lot of controversy around it that is uh, of a much more egregious form of plagiarism. And I'll tell you all about it after we listen to it. So this is Acid Jazzed Evening by Tempest.
awesomely funky tune you just listened to was Acid Jazz Evening by Tempest. And probably the first thing you would say is that this is, sounds like more like a Sid tune on the Commodore 64, and you would be half right. For Tempest, real name Jan Suni, a uh, sampled sounds from the Commodore 64, and, you know, it's pretty much kind of said in his little flavor text here, you know, composed by Tempest, ASM 2K old school music, inspiration from C64 Elites, thanks. And after all the thanks and greets he gives, um, it says that this was made in 2000. So I'd imagine at this time, you know, he was making this on the PC and probably had a sample bank of just a bunch of sounds made from the SID chip. So we probably decided to do it as that dot .mod format because it was the closest he could get to being like a Commodore 64's like three channels. Or even the AHX format, which was made using Abyss's highest experience, which was a tracker on the Amiga that emulated the SID chip, but gave it four channels. But now, as I said earlier, let's get into why there's a controversy around this track. So in 2006, Timbaland produced a track for Nelly Furtado, and it was called, the song was called Do It. And it started out like, you know, how most pop songs start out, like a nice drum beat and some, you know, synths going on in the background. And as soon as the main part of the song starts playing, um, there's this kind of strange arping sound that's pretty prominent. It's like, you know, not in the background, it's like right there. And then later on in the song, there's actually a melody playing along with it, but he, uh, it's kind of covered up by another synth line that was done by Timbaland to kind of possibly cover it up. So in 2007, there was a group on the internet that caught this, and were like, whoa, hey, this sounds familiar, so they kind of checked it out, and it turned out that it sounded exactly like a Commodore 64 cover by GRG of this track, Acid Jazz Evening. And so, like, somebody brought it up to Jansuni's attention, and then, of course, there was uh, some litigation that happened, and I think the ruling was basically that, you know, whatever you put on the internet isn't, like, there's no instant copyright and all this weird stuff about, like, you know, U.S. copyright versus, like, international copyrights, and it's just this huge, just gobbledygook of weirdness. But yeah, Timbaland basically used the song as, like, a backing track in his own song without, like, actually chopping it up or doing weird edits and stuff to make it, like, you know, just sample it. He actually just used the whole song, basically. And remember, kids, that's totally lame-o! But then again, that shows just how great this track is, like that somebody like Timbaland would want to use it in his own track, albeit in a not-so-great way. You know, if you want to hear it for yourself, just go look on YouTube, Acid Jazz Evening Timbaland, and you'll find, you know, a bunch of videos just kind of doing the comparisons and stuff, so, yeah. So now I think we'll end this episode off with one of my favorite current demo sceners. Though I'm not quite sure if he's making the music for demos, or if he's just making it because he just enjoys making it. We got Altenef Heading, by Vim with an exclamation point.
final track, Altanaf Heading, by Vim. And yes, he is one of my favorite active tracker musicians. And I actually discovered him back in like 2007 through his uh, album called A Random Collection of Consonants that was released back in 2003. And it's got such a great range of styles in it. It's like kind of like, you know, breakbeat stuff like this, really crazy drum and bass stuff, really ambient. It all like fits together for an OST for a game that doesn't exist. You know, it's one of my favorite go-tos. So yes, Vim, real name Keith Bayless. He's been making music since the 90s, mostly kind of like electronic chip style music using, like starting off with the Amiga and then moving on to the PC, just using, always using trackers. And he doesn't limit himself to just one tracker. He uses all different ones like Fast Tracker 2, Impulse Tracker, Pro Tracker, uh, Just Cola Buzz. And he's still actively posting stuff on SoundCloud. I think the last track he did was like four months ago, and it's really dang good. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this journey through uh, mod music. Uh, you know, even though it's pretty limited with the four channels, like as long as you know what you're doing, you can get a lot out of it. Make it sound like there's even more going on than, you know, than just those four. And sure, these may not have been the most limit-pushing tracks, but, um, you know, they're some of my favorites, so... Yeah, you know, it's my show! I can play what I want, and speaking of playing what I want, next episode's gonna be the my my entry into the Masters of VGM series that's going on with the other uh, VGM podcasters throughout the month of June. And I'm gonna be featuring my favorites, and also they're kind of those that I feel need a little bit more attention. And I could probably honestly say that I'm gonna be maybe the least prepared, as far as like you know notes and stuff, I'm just gonna be kind of just going with it, see what happens. It's gonna be a good time. I kind of, I kind of can't help it. It's like just that improvisational like spirit in me from hosting an open mic for nearly ten years. So now, where can you find me? Well, you can find VG Emporium on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and then of course you can listen to the show on all your favorite podcasters: Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, even. I've been your host, Rage Cage, and I'm looking forward to all the craziness that's going to be going on this month.